God's name is worthy and greatly to be praised. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. To all of our in-person worshipers, to all of our friends and loved ones that are live streaming. You always hear me say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're here to do nothing but to rejoice in it and to be glad in it because this is the day that God has set aside for us to give his name glory this morning. It's all right to praise him this morning. This may be your last time, so why don't you give God some glory this morning in this house this morning. Thank God for this day. I want to thank God for life, health, and strength. Being able to be clothed in my right mind. Being able to know that God can make a way out of no way. I want to thank God for that and for that alone. Then I want to thank God for our pastor in his absence today. We pray that he's getting the rest that he needs. And we also want to thank God for the wonderful time we had on this celebration. So we know that pastor is watching this morning. So we want to make sure that we carry on and conduct service just the way the Lord want us to do. Just because pastor is not here, that does not mean that the word of God is not going to go out this morning. Is that right this morning? You come and you have a mouth this morning. You ought to say so this morning. Praise God. I want to thank God for my brothers, always our MVP ministry. And so uh, they challenged uh, me because I heard something, and I won't tell them right off, but a lesson that we had. And I want to thank my brothers in the ministry. I want to thank everyone from the musicians to everyone here today. Because you know what? You didn't have to be here today. And it's not because of me. I know it's because of the goodness of God. So in, in this time in which we live in today, we are challenged by so many things today. I know that this message today, it will not only enlighten you, but this message would also instruct you. To know that one day our Father is coming back for us. But God is not coming back for some unprepared people. Some unlearned people, God is not coming back. Now, he did say, I wish that none would perish. But that all would come into repentance. I was once told that a man told me one time, he said, Mike, I want you to know something about people that do not eat God's word. He said, the reason why they don't eat God's word is because you're not hungry enough. Think about that for a while. You don't sit down at the dinner table and eat because you're thinking about eating. You sit down because why? You're hungry. And God's word will always fill you up if you get enough of it. This morning, my brother read the scripture this morning. And I want to just enlighten, if you will, if you stand this morning, I, I want to go back over there just a little bit for those that may not have had an opportunity to, to read that scripture this morning. It comes from Matthew 24, 42 and 44. And it says, watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord does come. But know this, that if the good man of the house have known, uh, uh, in the house have known what the watch would come, he would have watched and would not suffer his house to be broken up. 44, therefore be you also ready for in such an hour that you think not the son of man cometh. You may be seated. And this message this morning is entitled, Watch Your Time Before You Lose It. 
And I, I, I want to share with everybody this morning. I learned something, and, and it's all about what we do even on your job. Everybody on a job, you occur some time. Isn't that right? But at the end of the fiscal year, if you do not use that time, that time will be lost. That's the same way it is with God. God gives us 365 days of the year that we have occurred some time. And out of those days, how much time will we spend it with God? Time truly has made a change. I understand what it means when the song says time has made a change. Y'all know people are not praying like they used to pray. People are not living like they used to live anymore. There was a time that you knew time the way God meant time to be. Now, I, I want to share with you something, and this is going to startle because everybody thinks that because we had daylight saving time, something changed. The only thing changed was the clock. You still had Monday on to Sunday. Daylight saving time done nothing for a Christian but to show us that we better get our houses in order because man had decided that they're going to jump ahead of God and just make up some daylight saving time. Now, I'm going to share with you this morning, and I want you to pay attention to this. People talk about global warming, but listen at this. This should be a global warning. Listen at that. People are paying more attention to what they can see instead of paying attention what you cannot see. Now remember, God is a spirit, and we only worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't see God, but you can see him in his word. So when it says watch your time, your time is valuable because God gave you a time. And I think the preacher said there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Now, my most important one, I had to learn what he meant, say, it's a time to live, and it's a time to die. What is your time that you invest in the word of God while the Lord is coming back? What is your sign is going to be to tell somebody? I, I want to talk to our South by South Westerners. Do you know that music started a long time ago? Listen at this here. Investing your time in the world is one thing. But how many times as you sung a song and told somebody, I am a servant of the Almighty God? You're wasting time that God gave you to deliver a message on his return. You and I are investments that God invests in us. Thank you, George. Thank you, all musician, because somebody needs to know out there, God gave you that life. And he says to us, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. You already got your reward. You can strum it up, but guess what? You have no place in God's kingdom. Now listen at this. Everybody in this room got on watches, clocks, but the one thing that you do know that only God keeps up with time. Now let me, I want to share something with you here about this daylight saving time. Because remember this here, during that time, you still had heartaches, still had pain, your light bill had to be paid, 
car note got to be paid. What did it actually say? Nothing. God is trying to teach us for the love of money. It is a root of all evil. God ain't saying you can't have no money. But anytime you place money above God, you have started a fire that you cannot put out. Listen at that. Let, let me share you with you, because God, I mean, this was heavy on me, and God said, Mike, go back to daylight saving time so, so uh, the Christians can know that God started daylight saving time way back in the book of Genesis. Now, let, let me show you daylight saving time. And I know the preachers, y'all, y'all already there, in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to read uh, verses 14 uh, to 18. This is what daylight saving time was that God already set in an order. And he talked about at, at the firmament in heaven, he divided the day from the night. And he said, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That's your daylight saving time. And let them be for lights in the firmament. In other words, God created something out of nothing in the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Listen here. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and listen to what he said in verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. That's your daylight saving time. Uh-uh. Do, do, do not let this world get you all twisted. And to thinking that they're doing something that's going to make your life any better. This message talks about watch your time before you lose it because so many people are out there, but they're not telling anybody about Jesus Christ. Who goes to their job and work all day long and not turn around and say, I'm a minister. Uh, I'm a musician. I'm a deacon in the church. I mean, I play the, the percussions in the church. I play, I mean, I, I, I'm a soldier for God. Who actually takes time? I know you do it, Minister Man, but listen. There's a very limited few people go to their job and, uh, and, and tell somebody that I'm a soldier for the Lord. You do not go. Why? It's because, listen at this here. And I had to really go back into the chapter and see how the Lord was telling us that it's going to be a time that something is going to happen that the world can't even control. I had to go back and look at what he says about what happened about time. And this is also in chapter 24. And he said, and this is verse 5. Well, let's go to four. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Isn't that right? And you shall hear a wars, rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We are in some tough time. When God allows us to see, you need to pay attention to what is going on around you. Everybody in your circle is not on the same team. Here's something God told me and showed me. When a person said that they love you, this for a married, single, whatever you want to call it. If you say you love somebody, love is unconditional. It does not cost uh, money for love. If you love me because I can buy you a car, then all you have is a car without any love. I can get your hair fixed. You just need your hair fixed. But that didn't mean that I love you. What love says is, listen, you're sick, 
and I got to be there for you. Your back is hurt and I got to be there for you. It's unconditional. I got to give myself to you and not ask for anything in return. Christ didn't ask us for nothing in return. Because why? God gave his very best, his son. That means you and I don't have nothing to give but time. Time is all you got. One thing about time is there's not too much time. There's not too less time. But the thing about it is you got time. And the time you have, God lets you know. Let not your heart be troubled. Nor let it be afraid. Then I tell you, say, listen, I got a place already stored up for you. See, you ain't got to worry about that no more. The troubles of life will always cause us to fall back in darkness rather than stand up for the light. God looks at us, and now I know why God said that uh, he, 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 was, he was so hurt that he made man. I'm one of them. And I say to God all the time, Lord, forgive us. When you make us, you made us in your image, but yet we are such a bad example as to why you died on the cross for us. Why? What are you going to gain in this time that you lose? And then he said, all these are the beginning of sorrow. Verse 10, here we go. And then shall many be offended. Listen at this. And betray one another. They shall hate one another. Now, y'all, we see that every day. Somebody hates you and don't even know you. Yeah, yeah you, you, you're looking at me and you're saying, well, uh, 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 and, and this is going to help somebody out there because they always look as an African American is the only bank robber that, that's ever been heard of. They, they, they always portray us as rapists and murderers. But, but, but you know, uh, when we look at that, most of the time, what you see on that, it ain't an African-American on that. But the world wants to twist this thing around to show you that, hey, you're not who you say you are. But they know that we are God's chosen people. Because you know why? We trust in God. We don't trust in our finances. We trust that God can make a way out of no way. We know God is everywhere. And there's no secret, there's no stone that God say, I'm going to turn it over. There's nothing that it hid that I would not bring it to light. God looks at us and asks us the question, how do you value my time that I gave you? Give yourself some time. And he says, this is how you can gain some time. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. As a believer, we have to endure hardship. Listen, what I like, I like it say as a good soldier. It, yeah, see, when you're, in the, when you're in the army, you're in a battle constantly every day because Satan wants to destroy your livelihood. Satan got us doing anything. Ain't got nothing to do with God. This is what I tell a person, and I tell them with a whole lot of love. If you come to me and you're wearing your mama's dress and you got a beard and a mustache, I got to call it what I see. I'm not going to give you a name that you want to give yourself. We're living in that time today. Our job is to speak against the lie and tell them the truth. You were made in God's image, not in a garbage can. We're treating God like it don't make any difference. 
We treating God like, listen, Bible, God didn't wake me up this morning. I got up myself because of your daylight saving time. I ain't saving nothing. Go to that bank right now. That mo- you didn't put nothing in there. Go there Monday morning. You ain't going to have nothing in there. That's what allows us to be foolish when it comes to the revelation of God. God looks beyond our fault. Praise God. And he supplies our every need. God looks at us and says, y'all ought to be shaming yourself. Verse 24 says, for there shall rise. Y- y'all know who his name is. I won't call him in, but I won't call his name. For there shall rise false Christ, false prophet, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that you were possible. Now, this is what got me here. They shall deceive the very elect. Those that God chose, they're going to be deceived. They're going to walk around saying that there is no God. Because why? I gave you something that's tangible. And so now, instead of me riding around in my little Cadillac, I I got a Lamborghini now. And so I I start giving you some stuff and I start catering to your needs instead of what God want me to do. I'm learning something every day about watching your time. God teaching me, Mike, I gave you 61 years. Now, I don't look like 61 years. You know why? Because the time he gave me, I invested in God. See, I invest my time. But listen, I've had them time when, as we say, we was out in the ballroom. I've had all of that. I've chased a few little, you know, uh, skinny friendly girls. I, I tried it. But that was not who I am. Who I am, I was chosen by God to walk in newness of life. Like Paul said, listen, those things that were once gained to me. Paul said, put it behind me now. As a believer in Christ, do not let these things of the world get you messed up. And I want to help some of you. Don't think because you do 14 hours a day that it's going to help you catch up with that bill. You know why? Wow. All that's telling you is you ain't watching for God. Yeah. But God, God told you right there. I told you about the Facebook, so I won't go there. But God tried to teach you Everything that you need, I've already given it to you. Why are you spending time trying to worship your job and not to give me the glory? God said, how dare you tempt me that way? How dare you walk in darkness when I brought you into my marvelous light? God is looking at us and saying, is these the only people might? They believe in me. Where's my South by South Westerners at right now? They were saying, do you love me, baby? But now, do they love me now? Tell somebody. I'm watching my time. And I had to get a smart watch because I wasn't smart enough to keep up with my time. I come to my job and they say, Mike, uh, you done had an extra 30 minute lunch. I said, well, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what time it was. So I had to ask God, say, Lord, I need to keep up with time so I can do the right thing. So I, I got me a smart watch and I said, now I ain't got to do nothing but just look at it. That, that's how God operate. God said, look, I'll put it right before you. So now you know what you need. God will give it to you. Listen at this here. Verse 27, for as the lightning come out of the east and shine in the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man. Listen at that. God said, I'm going to rise up in the east and I'm going to go down in the west. But I need you to pay attention. 
Because somebody right now, they, I know you're getting ready for the look at the eclipse and you want to get your little binoculars and all that. You better be looking for something else. Because they not paying attention when it starts to get dark. Yeah, we, 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 we got more. Uh, we got more coming than what we think. Now listen, brothers, y'all know we talked about uh, uh, those plagues that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Moses had gave upon Pharaoh. And we talked about something that threw me out because I said, there's no way that if God sent frogs in my house, I'd let you go, I'd let the cat go, I'd let everybody go. There's something that we got to look at and say, this cannot be a man. This has to be of God. We see it every day. You going down the highway, they can watch here one of my favorites. God pulled up on the side of me. And he said, uh, I'm finna turn in that lane over there. I, I said, what? I mean, that lane you in is not no turning lane, so you, you got to get behind me. But you know what he did, George? He took off in front of me, but praise God, he ran right into another vehicle. Now, I'm not praising the accident, but I'm saying don't get ahead of God because you need to understand laws are made to protect you. When we break the law, God is going to punish you. Listen at this. I learned something a long time ago that being a fool don't cost you anything. You, get, yeah, you can get a scholarship being a fool. You can get a master's degree at being a fool. You, you, listen, you don't need nobody to help you become a fool. Sign yourself up, get your own degree, get your diploma because nobody has to know you're a fool but yourself. Listen, I, mean, I, I learned somewhere growing up as a child. My grandma would tell me every time. She said, she said, listen, one thing you know about a fool. She said, they're going to always look important. They look the parts. Wow. But they're not the part they're apart from. Everybody had ran up on, listen, now y'all might have saw one today before you came to church. And, and, and so I had to learn something about being that fool. Because I had learned one time, I used to be one, right? So that's why I've had to learn when it comes to being a fool. I graduated, and I got my master's degree right here. I got my master's degree. I got, I got my bachelor's degree right here because why? When I saw myself and I couldn't do it, I had to call on somebody that had authority to take me higher than I ever been before. Mm -mm. I don't need no looker to get high. I'm, a, I'm high every day. Listen, sometimes when I'm on the job, they say, Mike, you crazy. I, I hear you in that bathroom talking to yourself. I said, no, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to my daddy. And they said, your daddy is not in the bathroom. I said, my daddy is everywhere. Ain't nothing wrong with being out of your mind. Just make sure when you're talking to him, make sure you're talking to God. Isn't that right? Something I've learned. I'm, I'm, I'm growing. I'm growing every day. Sometimes when I see things, I'm just listening to how God show us that we got a hard time when it comes to remembering things. And I know my son-in-law said, he probably said, Dad, you done lost me right there. But, but, but I told him every once in a while, when I stand up for God, I don't know where God going to take me at. See, y'all will hear me say Walmart sometimes, and, and I tell Jan, we kind of tease on it a bit because I, I'm getting a little disturbed because they trying to make me now check out my own food. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and, and so I, I started feeling like Peter, you know, when I would go in there. They, 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 you know, I would get in the line, and they would say, well, get over there. And I said, well, what am I going to do over there? They said, well, you're going to check your food out. I said, tell you what, you check it out. And I walked out and stole the, ba the basket right there. This one shows us, that's lazy. We're paying you to bag our groceries. But now you want me, go get my groceries, pay for it, 
bag it and go out the store. Now, what did you do for the pay that we paying you? Nothing. That, that I'm telling you, it's, whoo, it, I, I'm trying, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying. Because I, I'm saying because I got to psych myself up. I got to go today, Jay, and I'm ready. I got to go to Walmart this evening. So I, I, I'm going to see that anything change because I think they don't want me there no more because I saw them. They, they, the, the security just stood at the door. He walked back out the door. He, he didn't want to bother me because I told him, I said, I'm here in the name of Jesus. And I said, I'll pay you for my father to take care of me. I said, come and get me, lock me up. I said, you know what? Because God will free me. That man walked back out the store, Jane. He walked back out the store. Because we living in a time now that people are out of their mind. Your hair ain't got to be standing up on your head to be out of your mind. Mm -mm. As I said, you can look the part. But you cannot live the part. Because listen what Jesus reminds us here. This is Revelation 3 and 3. Remember therefore how thou have received and heard. He said, listen, hold fast. Here we go. And repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come. Something I learned about a thief, a thief can be riding in your car with you. They be telling you, I, I don't know, you know, what time you go to work? You know, you come back home, the TV gone, and they sat right there to my, my goodness, that's, how did that happen? I, 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 listen, I've learned, I ain't got no more friends like that now. now. Now listen, I know them, I know them, I know y'all. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you real quick, I had a friend, Emmett. I gave the boy a ride every morning for a whole year. Now, mind you, I remember I had, I had six children, all right? I go outside to get in my van. I'm happy. I ain't had it but two days. Go out done. The remote ain't making no noise. I said, oh, well, maybe she parked on the back. I went the whole complex looking for my van. Now, 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 look, 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 preacher. He comes out door and say, what, what happened? I said, man, uh, you, you seen my van? No, I mean, man, he said, it's a shame how people do stuff like that. Come to find out, he stole my van. Drove it to Dallas, burnt the engine up. Oh, I ain't got back home, but he right in front of me. To show you how sometimes, that's how Jesus said, when I come back, I'm going to catch you. And when I catch you, you're not going to even know I'm coming now. I ain't giving you no time. That's why I say he reminds about watching your time is because your time is important. Don't let no man, listen to me, ladies. I'm going to help the men and the women too. My, here's another my grandmama told me. She said, listen, if the man of God is in our reading and study." Honey, don't go on there and tell him, honey, could you look at this and tell me what you think about this here? No, tell him about that later. Because he is at home trying to make sure that he take care of you. That's the priest in the house. He's making sure that you're covered. Leave him alone. Man, don't go in the house and ask her when she's there reading. Don't go on there and say, baby, you sure look good. Get out of the room. Because she's trying to draw closer to God. And you have to be respectful and remindful that God gave you her and him for a reason. I told you about that season they talked about, right? That light. God, something I learned. Everybody in here. George, we got a time, and we're going to die one time. Don't think you're going to say, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to come back at a butterfly. Well, you know, you're going to come back at something, but not no butterfly. In your mind, you think you're a butterfly, but you, you ain't coming back at no butterfly. 
gave her two destinations. One is a round trip ticket to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Which means you can walk around heaven. The other ticket is a one-way fare. It's hot. No AC is there. Barbecues all year long. You can bring all your family to go to the barbecue because there, there will be no heaven there. There'll be no peace there. There'll be no joy there. The separation will be you from God and God from you. What I've learned is that he made an illustration. And he said in verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Listen at this. But of that day, then I tell you, it's a certain day. God don't tell you what time I'm coming. He said, but that day and that hour, no, no man. Not the angels in heaven, he said, but my father. Now, he throws in us a free snack and let us know that in the days of Noah, they were married and drinking. What he basically says is, you were doing whatever you want to do. And Noah preferred 200 years. And I just got to believe he was saying it's going to rain. You know, but, but I mean, all the time, Noah worn out letting them know to repent. But they still continued on the same path. And what did it say right there? This is what it said right there. 36. But of that day and that hour, nor no man, nor not the angels of heaven, but the Father. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of man be. Basically, he said, I'm going to come up on you like a flood. One thing you learn about a flood, you can't stop it. Put up your brick wall, but you can't stop a flood. Those are some of the things that God teach us that we got to lose. When you lose time, uh, you got to invest time through prayer, reading God's word. When Jesus come back, listen, it ain't no more second chance. He want to make sure that you are ready because the choice have already been made. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. This to help us out. We are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. I, I got to go on down because it's feeling pretty good. He said, listen, verse 9, it said persecuted but not forsaken. Cut down, but not destroyed. Verse 10 said, always bad about in the body died of our Lord Jesus Christ that the life also Christ might be made manifest in our body. Don't spend time looking for something new, but always remember the old, the meaning, the beginning of a new life with Christ Jesus. Listen at this. You can't lose something that you don't have. If you don't have eternal life, how are you going to find it? If you brought nothing into the world, he said you ain't going to take nothing out of the world. But to be uh, paid a price that Jesus paid on cap. See, why would the Lord come back and find us sleeping? Now, y'all remember, he took Peter, James, and John. And I mean, that just threw me out because Jesus said, sit here and watch while I go and pray. And he came back, and the Bible said they were asleep. And what threw me in it, he had Peter, James, and John, but he called out Peter. Remember that? He said, Peter, you can even watch for me one hour. Now, hear what help us. He said, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh, what he said, is truly weak. So you got to understand something about when we're inside of these fleshly bodies. Listen, anything can take you off the path. 
Somebody can show you something. Not that you hadn't seen it before, but it's the fact that you just want to see it. But what I've learned is, I'll tell a woman in a minute, don't show me something that ain't none of mine. That, that, that'll work for me. Don't show me something that ain't mine, because you know what that means? God didn't give you to me. Don't show it to me. Wait until your change comes. That means you got to wait and listen to what God is saying to you. When a time comes that you're faced with a challenge, God is saying, wait on me and watch for me and spend some time in devotional prayer. What, what does it cost you to pray? Listen at this here. Now, now, now the one that pushed over the edge, this is what happens when you lose everything. Jesus said there'll be two in the field. I'm going to take one, and I'm going to leave one. He said two women will be grinding in the mill. I'm going to take one, I'm going to leave one. And he reminds us, that's the purpose when you lose time with God. You lose time because you're spending too much time occupying yourself with things that the world has to offer you. You spend less time with God. Now, here we go. Because now, we got to find out, this, this we're getting down to the end here, is about how you can save time. Right. Jesus wants us to be ready, not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed, listen, by the renewing your mind that you may prove that which is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That's your reasonable service. And how do you save that time? is spending that time with God saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. If you teach me what to do, I'll do it. If I'm walking, I have to walk by faith because I can't see where I'm going. Only God knows where you're going. You know what I'm saying? So what you got to do is spend some time with God. Matthew 5 and 16. This is how you can save that time you got. Somebody I told you around you got to know that something about you is different. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Listen, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Listen, you cannot. I got you, Jerry. I, I, we shared about walking on two sides of the fence. Imagining you trying to cut your yard and cut your neighbor's yard at the same time. Now, you know what I'm saying? You got to get, the, you got you, you to jump by. Something got to give. You either going to be in light or you're going to be in darkness. Women, watch that man that tells you he loves you. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you the reason why. Now, now, the married couple, they, they, they got it down. Because trust me, they've been through the, enough years. But I'm telling every single woman and every single man, just because somebody tells you they love you, that don't mean anything. Woo! Prove your love. Woo! Prove it to me. I don't need the car. I don't need your money. I just need some time. Come check on me. Check on my children and see how they do. Don't always show up at my house when the children are gone. Am I right about it? Yeah, y'all know that's a, that, that, that's a watch me right there. Watch what you align yourself to be involved in. You got to think of yourself as more than what somebody got to offer you. If somebody's going to give you less than what God made you, why take it? Just as they give you $100, you can get $200. God blessed me in a way that I had to learn as I'm here. At the same time, I got another job. But my job, I tell them every day, my job is to suffer for the will of God. That means, you know what? In this life that you and I share, that tells us something. In Matthew 10 and 16, 
He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. Basically what he says, I'm going to send you out and guess what? You're going to be ready because the watch meet that I send you out on, you're going to be ready for it. I'm letting you know what you're going to deal with. And brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 11, 29 and 30. All of this, as I told you before, when you read the entire chapter 24, you're going to see all about Jesus trying to prepare the disciple that one day I'm going to leave. And I'm coming back. This is my second coming back. Now, on this time, I come back this time. I'm not coming back as a friend. I'm coming back as a father. And a father that sees a child that is wayward, the father will correct the child. The Lord corrects us because he is our father. And any time you acknowledge him as God, you're going to be corrected. 29 and 30. What I love about this, he said, listen here. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Why? He said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God teaches us. It's time now for us as Christians. Before I go to my seat, most people say, Mike, well, take them to Calvary. Well, I hadn't been to Calvary. What I'm going to tell you is, I'm going to take you to Jesus Christ. There was a man that died for us, that gave his life as a ransom on Calvary. Not only did he give his life, but he gave his blood because he was pierced in his side. And the Bible said, listen, the blood ran down the streets of Jerusalem. That means God gave not only his son, he gave the sacrifice and he gave his blood and to testify, he said, listen, Jesus remind them now, no man can take my life, I'll lay it down and I'll pick it back up again. So that Sunday morning, we represent the getting up, the clothes in our right mind of Jesus Christ. We are walking, we are talking, we are believing that God has brought us and going to prepare a place for us. God bless you this morning.